welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and today's car is this the 2023 Honda Civic Type R a landmark car really for Honda particularly here in Europe I include UK in Europe because we're adopting the same rules and regs towards engine and CO2 emissions as the rest of Europe here in the UK and this car marks 25 years of Type R at Honda and it is also the last internal combustion engine only car to be sold in Europe. This is the end of the line. From the, if there is another Type R, and I'm sure there will be, it will have battery assist or maybe even it will be pure electric. We don't know what the future holds, but I, from what I'm hearing, Honda want to continue the Type R engines. So I'm sure it'd be battery electric hybrid type of thing. But this one in Civic speak, this is the FL5 taking over from the FK8 that I had in here in June 21, the sports line version of it with the lower spoiler and I was a bit rude about the styling. There's no need to be rude about the styling of this one though. They've really tidied it up. It's much more to European taste and there's an exceptional sassy and engine hiding underneath. Let's go and have a closer look. Now there's lots of changes on the design of this new Civic and all for the better in my view. So obviously Type R written loud and proud there and this being a Type R it gets the red badge, Honda badge there. There are also, these are proper grills here. Yeah, thank goodness. They say 48% increase in air intake area on this car. This down here is the brake cooling happens there. This is actually a false vent here, but I'll forgive them that because it's so much better than the one that went before. And aluminium bonnet on here just to keep the weight down and just a neat little seal here, which the other one had as well. But it's just far neater than the previous version. And of course, a working vent there. There's a lot of heat from this 329 horsepower engine. So that's what that vent is all about. So come round the side, another change is 19 inch wheels now instead of 20 inch the one i've tried the sports line was actually 19 as well and just bigger tires 265 30 19 michelin pilot sport four s's so you know a real top grade tire and big brakes as ever the brembo brakes that we saw before but now at the back here there is a proper vent sort of venting out of the wheel arch before that was just a blank vent but this one is a working vent so well done Honda for doing that again a sort of aero here and a little flip up here but much better at the back as well there's a wider track on this version I think it's 15 mil wider but it's into the body so it's flared arch there's no bolt on nonsense going on as there was on the FK8 this is much much neater now come round the back and yes, there's a great big spoiler again, but what I like about this one, when you're driving, you just don't see it. And it looks very purposeful. I am sure it does lots of good things. Red badge, Civic Type R, and three exhausts at the back. I don't quite understand the fascination with three exhausts, but um, obviously the audience for this car seem to like it, Honda like it, but when I look underneath, there's still just a single pipe coming for the engine, and I can't understand why it needs three. Surely it just adds weight, but it's a signature now of the Civic Type R. And also this diffuser, I'm afraid that is more styling than substance. When I look underneath, it's not, hasn't got a flat floor, so I can't see how it has any aero qualities. But a great big boot. That is the one thing you get with a Civic Type R is proper practicality and I do like that side opening boot layer and, and this cargo this is £150 for this Type R written all there. There is no spare tyre on this there's goo and things hiding this panel and of course the seats go down as well so it is you know because it's Civic base is a proper family sized car. Again, we'll look at the interior when we're outside, but just look at the glorious redness of it and crazy seats, wonderful seats. We'll come to those in a moment. And the red carpets continue into the back as well. The only trouble with the back seat is it's only a four seater, but you do get two cup holders for the two rear seat passengers. So a quick look at the engine aluminium bonnet on it and there we are oh complete with a bit of sort of fake carbon fiber and the redness of the top now i mean they honda used to do the top of the engine in proper red crackle finish like ferrari unfortunately not so anymore looks a great big space here 
trick turbo on this. They've, um, they've upgraded the turbo. They've taken a, a blade out, if I read the technical spec, to, for less inertia and it, and it spins quicker, different housing, etc. But a very neat insulation, loads of space around it and putting out more power. So 329 horsepower now. Previous version was 316 horsepower. Uh, torque's gone up as well, 420 newton meters against 400 for the previous version. So what we're going to do now, take it outside, take it for a drive. Yeah, plays a little tune as you get in. You're just in a sea of redness as soon as you step in with these red carpets, red seats. I know they're black in the back, but uh, it's exactly as you expect on a Type R. Around the dash, some, just the details that I, you know, it's picked up as soon as I got in. I love this sort of honeycomb look of the dash here. It's on all civics apparently, but it's a really nice design touch. So, so the air vents sort of hide behind there. Really neat. And of course the Type R Civic R and this car is number 1122. They're not sort of limited production, although they are going to be a low production run. And actually in the UK, they've already say you, you have to join a waiting list to see if you're going to get allocated one of the few hundred cars that are going to come to the UK. In Japan, they say they're not taking any more orders, such as being the excitement around this car arriving. But that's what Type R does, you know, and, and the fact and the history in the last, you know, internal combustion engine car. But anyway, digressing. Lovely aluminium gear lever that I have seen in Honda Type R since the world they first appeared. I remember first Integra, what a lovely change. Suede wheel, smaller uh, airbag, and all sorts of modern tech on here. I've got all the lane assist and that sort of thing. Also, it's got this, uh, this type of, um, you've, you, all the data. If you remember when we used to fit all those DARs across the dash, no more, there it is, all digital, like Nissan GTR and now, you know, Honda Type R as well. Really nice. So, and the seats. The seats get a special mention. I'm not going to save it to the end. They're just the best seats. You get in their proper bucket, the Alcantara, they're red, they grip you perfectly. They are absolutely ace. And they drop you in the car, and I feel slightly touring car with a view out and the, you know, rays, lots of headroom, etc. In the back, unfortunately, they're just the individual black seats, but hey, can't have everything. Let's get out of here and get on some better roads. Should also point out on here that you can go to home, that's what you get there with the apps. Obviously, it's got CarPlay, etc., all on there. It's this Honda Log R I'm using to get all those dials up. And then you've got the, your choice down here of driver mode. You can go plus R for the full nutty experience. Or on here, I can go from comfort to sport to individual. And one thing I really like is once you've set that and you turn the car off and go away and then come back to your car, it stays in wherever you were last time you were in it. So that's a good thing. Also, uh, wireless charging on there, huge great cup holders in here and a bit of a bin in there. So, um, glove box, etc. big uh, door pockets as well. That's the plus side of being sort of based on the Civic. Let's have a little look. Just light controls, typical. Not using all the revs yet, but <laughs> already. <laughs> That turbo is very keen to light up, you know, maximum torque is at 2,200 RPM. So there's plenty of grunt from the moment you sort of set off. Um, it wants to get on with this car and you've got lots of change of lights and that sort of thing. There is a fair bit of uh, road noise coming through, so I hope you can hear me. I measured it at 75 decibels. It sounds a bit louder than that to me, but uh, maybe that's correct. One amazing feature I found with my few days with this car, I'm looking at the MPG average, and since this car arrived a few days ago, I've averaged 30 MPG, which is very good. You will get in regular normal driving, not the stuff we might be doing later, over 30 MPG out of this car, and that's really good for a turbocharged 320 horsepower, 330 horsepower, four cylinder Type R. 
I think part of that is actually it's got a really high compression ratio, getting all techy, but it's 9.8 to 1, which for a turbocharged car is high, and that just means it's pretty efficient even when it's not on boost. I love the way you don't actually see the rear spoiler when you look out of the back. If you look right down, you just see the underneath of it, but it's a very clever design. It completely invisible from the driver's seat. Right, I'm going to change down in a second just to go up the hill here. Don't really need to. It's 4,000 RPM. And, 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 yeah, already, it's scrabbling for a grid. <sighs> yeah, it, it does sort of go to show that there is a limit to how much power you can put through the front wheels. And we're at it in this Type R. It's funny, it sort of adds to its appeal. It feels unruly. It's, you know, you could criticise it, and I'm sure on a super flat surface, you know, a racetrack, etc., it will be very good. But I saw my B roads, it's noticeable a lot of the time if you use the tool. But the thing about the uh, Type R is it's so civilised in normal use. You can soon go, I can put this back down out of individual, go back to comfort, and it's got adjustable dampers on it, etc. It all sort of calms down very quickly and the engine response, even the steering goes a slightly different weight. And it's, it, it reversed to a very Liverpool car. And that is actually what its star turn has always been, is this madness. And then, yeah, it's the family car, it's four doors, yeah, yeah, we use it all the time, got on holiday in it. And this one is exactly to that formula. Now let's select plus R, and just do a standing start out of here. I'm not using any sort of launch control or anything. just gets to 60 in second and it's pretty jiggly down here let's just go back to it and I want to try it in comfort mode on this bit of tested bit of tarmac that's why I use it I use this route because it's terrible uh, surface so you can sort of see what cars are going to behave like it's still a sport setting in comfort it's, it's a usable setting but it's not a true comfort but it's it's perfectly acceptable so the really testy bit is just down here. Yeah, very little deflection at the wheel. Yeah, remarkably so, very little tram lining going on. So yeah, well, it's good. Let's try put it into sport. Yeah, instant a jump to a different sort of feel. I can now feel the bumps much more. There's quite a difference actually between sport and comfort. It just feel sport actually feels a bit too hard for this race, so comfort it is. It's a misnomer, comfort, it should just say normal or something. It's also got auto blip on the gear change as well. It makes my heel and toe in redundant really. And let's just try it around here. Oh, it just utterly doesn't break a sweat and those sort of sweeping beds. I can imagine this would actually be really quite fun on track. So it just settles and it just flows when you load it up. It doesn't start to scrabble. You're not noticing that sort of crazy torque figure. Just a really nice composed feel. It's probably time to go through some likes and dislikes of the car, starting with the dislikes. Well, the one th I haven't mentioned yet is the price. Uh, it's an expensive car. £47,000 list, extras on this car, well the paint £650 and that boot line £150, so another £800 on top. That makes it £12,000 more than the previous Type R, but I can see this is going to be much more restricted production, lower numbers etc. And yeah, resale value looks pretty good. Another thing, well, if you, I'm spending that much money on the Type R, I want to be able to configure it and make it mine, but very limited number of colours, hardly any options, just those colours, I think there's five colours. I thought there wasn't white, but if you look at the configurator, they don't actually put a ring round white, and if you 
put your mouse over it, suddenly it comes alive. There is racing white, which had to be in the colour selection. Another dislike, well, I think we've hit the limit of what we can do with front wheel drive and this turbocharged four cylinder. Lord knows when you go to battery, how they're gonna make it work. I suppose the next stage is four wheel drive. We'll just have to wait and see. But the likes, it exists. <laughs> Oh, this sector of the market is, is just a disappearing fast. Renault have abandoned it. And it's so sad because it's such a usable car. It's a hatchback with this great performance. And I'm just going to try these better. Let's try it around here. Oh, it's so. Around here. That's all right. Yeah, there you go. Oh, it's struggling to put the power down. But it's just fun. It's that unruly sort of nature that actually makes it great fun. Is it fun? And it's a manual, and it will just encourage you to use it. It has huge appeal, and you can sell it on the practicality button as well, and sell it at home. And it's nice that it's not a performance SUV, it's 1429 kilos, which okay, is heavier than you might want, but it, it, pretty light in today's terms, and it's got all the toys to take us into Euro 7, so it's gonna be around a while. So I think, yeah, overall, I absolutely love it. I love it exists, I'd love it's a Honda. You know, Honda and engines just go together. They're the world's biggest producer of internal combustion engines. You add up all the power tools, all the mowers, all those sort of engines, motorbikes and car engines, 30 million engines a year. And we trust Honda. And that's what I love about this car. It's Honda, it's Type R, and it's known as a group of engineers who really want to make the best drivers front hats car. That they, they celebrate it and in this model. And because it's a Honda, you know it'll ca carry on working for decades to come. So it's a sign off, hugely enjoyable. I think I actually probably, the GR Yaris is more fun. It's just that little bit more nimble, makes a better sound and that sort of thing, but it lacks the practicality of this Civic Type R. And if you want practicality and a hot hat, you can do no wrong in getting one of these Type R's. If you can find one, I saw they're selling for about £55,000 in the market, because they're going to be rare. So there you go, that's my review of the Civic Type R. I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, well, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.